In this day and age, I truly feel like we have so many software tools that are controlling the entire software delivery process. And honestly, while it's amazing that we have a sense of or perceived sense of control, um, there's still so much anxiety that is surrounding actually deploying software, no matter what, AWS outage, anyone? So that really got me thinking. I mean, I was just speaking actually with the co-founder of BAML yesterday, and he told me that feature flags and experimentation and A-B testing is still incredibly important in this day and age. And one really great example of that is that OpenAI acquired Statsig, an experimentation platform. And so what does, that, what does that really mean here? That means, well, first, I agree. I think that um, these platforms and tools are important. I still believe that feature flags and experimentation is important. But I also think it's a testament to the next generation of AI for progressive delivery. And I think that that acquisition is actually laying the groundwork for what it means to merge the um, the past or the present ways and methodologies of shipping software and the ways in which we can then create AI-native progressive delivery systems. But let's go back for a second and think about the current paradox that I believe occurs in this deployment and pipeline and software delivery experience. So many months of hard work, right, and quality assurance and collaboration across teams and making sure software is production ready. And, but at the end of it, you're still holding your breath to an extent, right? Who gets the code first? What percentage of users are going to get this new feature that we're shipping? Or um, at what point do we decide that we want to scale up and all users or a higher percentage of users get access to software? How long before we trust it, we believe that it's ready to go fully live? Is this spike that we're seeing in our observability and our monitoring tools, is this a fluke or is this a, a symptom of some larger failure that we need to take into account? And so we have the feature flags and we have the gradual rollouts. We have these tools, but the pipelines are, are running while humans are still worried. We're still worried about the end result. We're still worried about the overall health of our software systems. So I think that there is an intelligence gap, not in humans, okay, let's be very clear, not talking about practitioners, I am talking about with our pipelines. They are, we're already observing thousands of patterns in real time. That's something, that's data, really. But how are we leveraging that data holistically across the entire system? Without this learning capability, I think that we're missing out on a lot of opportunities for our systems to actually evolve, mature, become more intelligent over time, and provide us with insights so that we can shift from being reactive as practitioners and with our systems into being proactive. So we can switch from being in defense mode when we're deploying into offense. Um, when I think about... Um, uh, the, the, the generative AI over the past year, over a year now, I have been so in the weeds with generative AI that I almost forgot the things that got me excited about AI and machine learning to begin with. Remember when the YouTube recommendation engine came out and that was actually newsworthy? Think about that. So I had to remember and reflect that what makes AI amazing is that we can get those insights to become proactive as practic practitioners. So how can we make sure that we apply that to software delivery? Now, I work at Kodo, and Kodo is an AI code review platform, right? And what's great about this and what we believe that our differentiator is, is that it's not just about analyzing and providing suggestions for the small code diffs or large ones, depending on the type of engineer you have and how you ship code. Um, it's not just about providing um, suggestions for improvements of your code right there in GitHub or whichever version control system you use. It's a lot more about having a deeper understanding of the past architectural decisions that have been made, your team standards, any type of best practices or organizational rules, so that the, over time, what actually gets merged into your main branch and gets deployed to production, that's data that's taken into account. 
and allows for the suggestions to improve over time of what, is, what the warnings could be or um, what the positive aspects of your code could be. Oh, it's in line with the patterns that currently exist in your code base. So that concept, let's apply that to the entire pipeline. I'm finally getting to the slide that I have up here. <laughs> Deployment pipelines, I believe, can evolve and are evolving into autonomous, agentic systems that can watch your systems, that can learn and act to determine how it can improve over time, with you still as the human in the loop. And really, it's going to be more about, in the future, of balancing systems that are improving over time, AI, but also the intuition of practitioners. How are we going to combine those different types of, of uh, intelligences and skill sets in this world of, of data and complex AI and software delivery? So let's think about the vision. What is the vision for an autonomous AI native delivery? I think pipelines should be able to actively reason and diagnose and heal over time. And it takes a few different components in order to do that. I'm, I'm sure a lot more than what I've put here, but at a high level, we need context. Deep code base analysis that's going to map the impact and the risk and all the dependencies that are associated with your code so that AI can intelligently suggest, I believe that you should ship to this percentage or this particular um, cohort of users. And then adaptive times for when you should scale out to more of the user base or taking into account maybe multimodal AI that's going to blend the code complexity and the tests and any patterns that currently exist so that it can recommend Windows dynamically for scaling up or down depending on the results of initially deploying certain um, pieces of software. Then there's anomaly detection. Being able to decipher and cross-reference logs and code to determine and also past incidents that have occurred and all the security scanning. Think of all of that data that can help with distinguishing between if there are some benign um, issues or spikes in your monitoring observability tools that you're noticing or when there are real threats. And then the other aspect of that is predictive self-healing, being able to recognize failures within seconds and being able to roll back or reroute or patch issues before you even have to assemble your team like your Avengers. And then the big question, trust. We're all thinking about if we want to build systems in this way, if we want software progressive delivery uh, to be AI native, how do we even begin to trust AI that it's making the right calls? Um, if we really do want to commit to moving forward, we need to start small, really. Small use cases, simple as letting AI pick the first um, canary cohort, then using machine learning to determine um, which uh, percentage of users or at what points that you're going to scale up and think about uh, the actual code risks that are associated with that. And then the feedback loop as being the humans in the loop, the practitioners, to decide how are we going to be able to refine these agentic systems over time to improve it, which also requires investing in data quality. We have the data already. If you have been implementing any tools for deploying and monitoring software, how can we then begin to connect that into a holistic end-to-end -end experience where you have the insights even starting from the moment you're writing code in an IDE or the moment at which you're reviewing code? And then we need metrics. At the end of this, I would like less alerts. How about that? Less noise that we get from alerting systems. And maybe we'll need fewer dashboards over time um, and, uh, and boring, boring deployments. Wouldn't that be great, right? And the foundation of this really, um, I have to get through this pretty quickly, um, training data. We need the data from all of the different systems that we're using to deploy software. And then we need all the code diffs, the test coverage, the feature extraction. We need probabilistic um, decision models. We need the machine learning aspect of all of this. Then we've got to tie in security. Security is an incredibly important part of understanding response intelligence. And then the human uh, AI partnership. 
you as practitioners and AI as something that can be improved over time and you determining what does improvement look like and what aspects of this system do you need to refine so that when it learns, it's learning in the right direction and it's helping you in improving. And to get through to the end of this, start small and make sure you scale up over time with different use cases for actually becoming what it is or what it could be, AI native progressive delivery. I want engineers to be able to reduce the anxiety when it comes to um, shipping software. And I want sh software to be shipped more safely and for pipelines to be intelligent. Thank you.